Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, it's great to be back with you all today. Uh, I'm here with my partner, John Coleman, and our favorite philosopher, Bill Jordan. Ta-da! Ta-da! Philosopher, philosopher baby boomer. Yeah. Mm. So when I... Uh, when I hear the word baby boomer, I can't help but think of uh, rock and roll. Baby boomers mm -hmm. kind of invented rock and roll. It's the music of our youth. You know, it's certainly music is different today. Boy, is it ever different today. But I remember uh, being a, a kid dancing to our parents' music in the beginning before rock and roll. And then rock and roll came in and you never heard of the standards anymore and you didn't hear any of those it was all rock and roll and then the beatles and it changed everything and then after the beatles it it just transmorphed into more rock and roll more rock and roll and then suddenly it died when rap came out i don't know i don't know what happened i don't either but, you <laughs> but know, talking about, but talking music, about beatles, i mean i'm sure you guys remember i was watching i was in fourth grade the night they appeared on the ed sullivan show wow <laughs> And I, I somehow it was promoted, I guess. I don't remember how, but I remember, you know, the Beatles were going to be on. It was a big deal. And yeah. I was shocked to see that they spelled their name the way they did, because I thought it was like the bug. Uh, you know, I thought it would be B-E-E-T-L-E-S. But no, that's not how they did it. And yeah. I do remember my parents, you know, long haired, you know, long haired hooligans and stuff. It's like you look now at them. They were wearing suits. Their hair was like barely covering their ears, nothing compared to, quote, really long-haired hippie people. Yeah. Um, but wasn't that something about the whole British invasion? You know, it was Chad and Jeremy and Peter and Gordon and the Dave Clark Five. And, I mean, that was just a great time. I still I still gravitate, uh, if I'm out in the car, uh, 60s, 70s music. Uh, is where I often will land. And it's a rare time when I've got to go, my gosh, can't anybody find any of the good ones? So I'll go 60s, 70s, 80s. Every now and then I'll go 50s. You guys are a tad older than I am. I remember some 50s stuff, but mainly for me, the 60s and the 70s. And in thinking about that too, there's a difference in, I, I think because, and I'm not very, oh, I, I readily admit, I'm not that schooled or up on modern music because most of it I don't care for. And I, it's it's a it's an acquired taste I don't care to acquire. You know I know what I like and and if I hear something new that I that I like it will typically happen in country music, as opposed to pop music these days. Yeah, there used to be hit songs that were about historic events or even TV themes. Sure. You know there sure. was Happy Days and. Uh, the Rockford Files was a hit song. The theme from the TV show, the police TV show, SWAT by Mike yeah. Pope. It was an instrumental. It was a hit song. There used to be hit songs about historic events. Johnny yeah. Horton with The Sinking of the Bismarck or The Battle of New Orleans. All sung by the same guy, by the way. Yeah. Same guy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, here's another one. It's a story song. And it was it wasn't a song, it but it was a record, and it was I believe number one. Lauren Green with Ringo, you remember that? Yeah, mm. yeah. It was a western. It was a cowboy, and Ringo was a bad guy, and he yeah. talked the song. Well, what, know, speaking of talking, pardon? Speaking of talking songs. There was a there was a trucking song like that, but my favorite among those was the the deck of cards. Yeah, that was great. Martindale. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think back to uh, uh, music uh, uh, that affected me, and it seems to me that when I was a little kid, things like uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary and the Kingston Trio, and then it sort of jumped uh, at some point in my teenage years to uh, uh, Janis uh, Joplin and Joe Cocker. And, uh, and then when I was in college, I had a music appreciation course at 7 a.m. in the morning in downtown Manhattan, uh, it was a great class. Uh, Miss Hall was uh, our uh, instructor, and I got introduced to classical music. So I, I don't remember any particular thing that um, uh, uh, drove me at any one point. You know, at those little points, it sort of changed. But then when I went into the military, uh, it became country, and country is still a, a, my favorite genre today. Sure. My uh, my introduction 
to classical music, uh, it was probably like a lot of people, was uh, uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons. <laughs> really? <laughs> sure. Yeah, don't, don't you remember where he's the conductor and they're and they're they're doing this classical piece and ah uh, yeah uh-huh. oh that was some that was some good stuff but you know if you look back I mean you can I, I I don't have the facts in front of me but if you look back and just Google Billboard Top 100 and pick a year in the 70s and pick you know the songs of the year you will find country crossover songs you will yeah. find disco you will find country kind of like you know the eagles you'll find story songs you'll find tv theme songs yeah. Yeah. you will find such a diverse list and i just don't think you see that anymore and i'm, I'm not saying yay or nay i'm just saying there's a there's a huge difference well there's a difference i think in pop culture anyway but definitely in the music and that's what i do lean on is uh still just going back to my youth you guys can i mean it is so tied to our emotion that I'm sure, and I can do this, 1970s, 1960s, I hear a song, and I will think of a particular girl because of that song. Yep, or where you were when you were dancing to it or when you heard it playing, sure. Yeah. Also, I, it seems to me that um, you being an old radio guy, I, I didn't I, mean old as a Yeah, actually, there. John, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill, as a radio guy, you know that uh, there were, back in that era, there were DJs who were, God, they were national heroes, some yeah. of them, you know. Yeah. Um, and of course, going back to the Beatles, in every major city, uh, the Beatles promoter, I can't remember who the name was, but he, he would have a, he would pick a DJ who would be the fifth Beatle, if you recall that. There was always a fifth Beatle, you know. Well, if you've ever, um, if you've ever but, seen the Beatles' album live at Shea Stadium, famous I was there, by the concert way. album, Bob Eubanks from what? The dating game or the, the newlywed game? Yeah. He was yeah. like the host DJ. And if you look at the tickets, it was like $2.50 to see the Beatles at Shea Stadium. Mm. <laughs> I was there. I remember. Really? Wow. Yeah, I was sitting, I was sitting in a... Bleachers near Murray the K, Murray Kaufman. Oh, you mean she, at his swinging soiree doing submarine uh, uh, watching? Murray the K and his swinging soiree in New York City, yeah. right? And at submarine uh, uh, watchers. Submarine races. Submarine yeah. watchers. Yeah. yeah. But but Bill, you're right. It's it's um, it, it, it's something about youth. I mean, I hear music today. We, we still listen to a lot of uh, music, uh, more pop stuff some country uh but it doesn't have the same emotional effect on me uh because i guess i'm not as vulnerable to the experiences i'm having uh, you know at 14 at 16 right every every experience is a new gosh gee whiz printed in your brain forever moment well, you know, the combination of hormones and music is a pretty powerful potion yeah Oh, by yeah. the way, I, I I would want I wouldn't want to uh, end this uh, segment uh, without paying homage to uh, the Beach Boys, and all oh, the right. the Beach Boys, which quite frankly, until I moved to California, uh, wasn't as much in my mind. But uh, uh, I somehow seem to have really picked it up and always enjoyed listening to it on the radio. You think? Yeah. I mean, what harmonies? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tremendous. Yeah. Yep. And still going at it, and still doing it. Yeah. So, so uh, now that we've gone down musical lane, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Bill, for having reminded us about uh, how much music has made to us in different ways at different times of our lives. And uh, but I, the funny thing is, I think that all of us and everybody in our audience sort of has adapted from time to time. Uh, as you say, uh, for you, uh, it, it may remind you of a, a different person that you were dating or cared about or things like that. Uh, but at different points of our life, different kinds of music meant different things. And, uh, uh, and that's the way it is. And that's what's happening with kids today as well. Uh, even with all the stuff that we look and we, we maybe listen to and say rap, well, our parents said rock and roll. Uh, so, um, and they all have a meaning to the kids as well. So. Uh, thank you for this trip down memory lane. 
Absolutely. Hey, thanks for having me back. And again, just a quick reminder, the Embrace the Boom thing is for baby boomers primarily, but it's just a reminder to live your life, forget your age, embrace the boom, regardless of where you are in life. Always a pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me back. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.